Okay, so today's question is sent by Dr. Nawal from Qatar and she was reading ventilator associated pneumonia and she was reading the section on how to prevent ventilator associated pneumonia webs. So in that she has requested clarification on two things which she found doubtful. One is uh, the sedation free interval and the other is use of proton from inhibitors. They should not be used because they can increase the chances of web. So let's see both of them. So the first is sedation free interval. It is recommended that we should stop the sedation daily to assess the uh, weaning uh, of uh, condition of the patient. Uh, this will help to prevent delirium, to prevent atelectasis and it will help to reduce the length of stay of the patient on ventilator and which in turn prevent the web. Means the longer the time the tube remains inside the patient, the more chances of web. So by giving sedation free intervals, we can definitely reduce the web. So this is somewhat a clearer picture in that, that those patients are at low risk. Means those patients who doesn't fit into category of ARDS. Because in ARDS, if you are dealing with ARDS or any condition in which the ventilator requirements are very high, like you are ventilating on 8 or 10 of PEEP, the peak pressures are high or the patient is having very bad pneumonia. So in those conditions where your PF ratio is very less, uh, uh, it is less than 150 or somewhat less than that. In those conditions, even you need to use neuromuscular blocking agents within 48 hours of the uh, mechanical ventilation. You need to continue for them at least 48 hours. And in those patients, the sedation free interval is not um, recommended. So if the ventilator requirements are very high, then the risk of getting a patient ventilator asynchrony or dyssynchrony and then associated ventilator associated lung injury, barotrauma or volutrauma, these chances increases as compared to those patients in which the ventilator parameters are a little less. 40-50% of FiO2, then uh, PEEPS is not high. In those patients, you can definitely give uh, sedation free interval daily and assess for the neurology. There are chances that you may uh, decide a little one or two day earlier that this patient can be weaned and liberated from the ventilator. So this way, uh, web can be prevented. In neuro patients also, in which you are ventilating for uh, reducing the ICP or keep the patient knocked down, sedated and paralyzed, in such patients also giving sedation free inter interval is not recommended. So it all depends on which condition you are dealing. If the high ventilator settings are there or there is some neuro condition, some condition in which uh, giving the sedation free interval will harm the patient more than in uh, the web then we don't give sedation free interval. But in those conditions where there is no contraindication and the ventilator requirements are less, the settings are less, yes, giving sedation free intervals on daily basis helps us to reduce, uh, see the weaning uh, um, readiness of the patients. So this is clear because it's in most of the study, studies, the earlier the patient gets off from the ventilator, the earlier the chances are that there are, will be uh, uh, less web. Also, one important thing is less sedation, less delirium and also after extubation, the cough reflex is preserved a little bit more because the patient will cooperate. If there is a more delirium, then post extubation also, the patient can aspirate and this can lead to hospital acquired pneumonias. Now coming to second point is the use of proton pump inhibitors for uh, stress ulcer prophylaxis in mechanical, mechanically ventilated patients. So, how this, con how this concept of stress ulcer prophylaxis came? In the early stages, when there was the modern intensive care was not there, the, uh, there were some uh, deaths of the critically patient and then autopsy were done and then they found that in those patients, those who have bled, there were uh, those who are a mechanical ventilator, they were upper GI bleed and there were regions, erosions in the stomach and other areas and they thought that it is because of the stress ulcers. So prophylactically stress ulcers, prophylaxis were started giving and this in, uh, was then um, recommended in certain studies and this becomes a protocol. But what and the main idea was that we, it will prevent the GI bleeding, stress ulcer prophylaxis. So stress ulcer prophylaxis we give uh, by PPIs and sucralfate and S2 blockers. So that will, it will reduce the gastric erosions and which in turn will lead to less GI bleeding and which in turn will lead less mortality as compared. 
but on the contra uh, dictory side it was also thought that uh, it is also seen in fact that when we give stress ulcer prophylaxis in the form of ppis the gastric alk uh, alkalization occurs the ph of the gastric fluid becomes alkalized and this leads to development of or colonization of the gastric uh, gastric stomach with pathogenic uh, organisms and these can lead to chances of uh, more wear so but um uh, and still the data is debatable there are multiple studies multiple meta analyses and reviews also on this and there are contradictory contradictory well contradictory results the latest one shows that in in some around 3000 patient they saw uh, with the kept on pentaprozole versus placebo and they found that there were some uh, bleeding uh, were there in the uh, uh, pentaprozole group also but it was they were not uh, they were not life threatening and the chance uh, incidence of web were not more even the um, incidence of clostridium difficile infections were also not uh, more in th those group so the use of pentaprozole in, in uh, infusions or ppis is recommended only in two condition one is in mechanically ventilated patient and the other in the patients of uh, coagulopathy in which the stress ulcer prophylaxis actually will work in fact as a sepsis guidelines in 2021 they the routine use of ppis prevention of uh, stress ulcers has been downgraded the evidence has downgraded to use them regularly so if you are feeding the patients uh, uh, on mechanical ventilation and then the uh, there is no if the patient is not very high risk the non diabetic young patient you are feeding the patient then the uh, then giving ppis is not very sensible option but the patient is geriatric patient if the patient is diabetic on mechanical ventilation and you feel that this is a high risk patient then ppis can help you in preventing the uh, stress ulcers and in fact if the bleeding occurs it can be it in few patient it can be massive but usually it is not seen in fact the one study in which they did autopsy is also i'm not remembering the study in which they found that even after giving ppis there were some stress ulcers and so they thought that the we are giving ppis and um, sucralfate in the hope that this will prevent the stress ulcer but maybe the pathophysiology is different in these sort of patients so the concept of giving ppis as a stress ulcer prophylaxis to prevent the gi bleed versus ppis causing web both are controversial no nothing is uh, solid no evidence is solid of one versus other so as a general rule in high risk patients we give ppis in low risk patient if we are feeding the patients then we avoid and if we are uh, starting the feed early then ppis can be avoided so this is the dictum uh, in that so both the questions yes in uh, for sedation free interval if there is no contraindication uh, uh, medically and the ventilator settings are less uh, means they are simple you can uh, give sedation free interval daily we should but if the uh, patient is having ards or the patient is having raised icp then you know, moderate or severe ards and raised icp then sedation free interval will harm the patient secondly in ppis if the patient is a high risk patient on mechanical ventilation or having coagulopathy such patient should be given on a case to case basis ppis versus a patient who is a young fellow no high risk Uh, you have ventilator patient and you have um, no coagulopathy and you have started the feeding early of, to this patient then ppis can be avoided i hope this answers some of the queries uh, dr naval and thank you for asking do read and try to read more about it thank you